Hello and welcome to this two-part tutorial on portrait drawing. The first step to drawing anything, no matter what the subject matter, is to build a rough sketch. Do that by looking for the largest shapes. So here, for instance, her head is a circle on top of the rectangular angles made up by her shoulders and arms. Or, taking an even larger context, I can draw a rectangle of her entire body and top that with the circle of her head. So let me build the composition using those basic shapes, then look for where things wind up in terms of each other. Use a piece of scratch paper and then make some marks that will measure off the proportions. So here I can mark off the width of the head at the widest point and use that measurement to line up other things on the body. Then take that same width to your picture and that will help you to get a rough idea of where things go. And once you have the largest shapes in place, you just start to lay in the smaller shapes within those large shapes and you build it from the outside in. See how sketchy and messy my lines are. I'm not putting any time into anything, but I still want the shapes to be clear enough that it's a meaningful guide for later on. And don't forget to give yourself guidelines as needed. So by starting with my really basic shapes, I've now got a super messy, but overall fairly correct layout. So now I'm going to transfer the drawing to a piece of drawing paper. When you start to transfer your drawing onto drawing paper, you want to do the preliminary sketching phase in a much lighter hand. So I'm going to go about it the same way as before, sketching in the largest shapes first, and then put guidelines in for the angles of the head and the angles of the body right away. I've already taken a measurement for the width of the head in comparison to the distance between the head and legs, so I can transfer that onto my drawing paper here, and then just slowly work it up, working from the largest shapes inward to the smaller shapes. When you're placing the facial features, it's a good idea to take some measurements in terms of the eye's length. So if this is the length of the eye, then it's one eye length between this eye and the end of the face here. Oftentimes an eye length also measures the distance from the bottom of the eye to the bottom of the nose, and that's approximately true here. It's usually about an eye's width between the bottom of the eye and the bottom of the nose, then from the bottom of the nose to the bottom of the mouth. So I'll just sketch this eye in place first, and then take my measurements. If this is the width of the eye, then this should be the outer corner of the face. The nose should end about here, and the mouth should end about here. Continually look for where one plane intersects another. So here, the line that extends from the bottom of the nose also creates the point of intersection for the face. Then the next phase is going to be erasing these messy lines and cleaning up the lines that I know I want to use. After your sketching phase is complete, your next step is to start the shading. Start with a fairly light pencil, like an F, and keep two things in mind when you begin. You always want to follow the contour of the shape. Also remember that even shadows have shapes, and you want to look for those shadow shapes and put them down as such. So here's a rectangle of dark on the hair, and then this big dark shape is a one big piece. And when you have really fine highlight lines, put those down by scratching into the paper before you have any graphite in place. You just want enough detail to give the impression of what you're going after. So after you have laid in those highlights, you can go right over the top of the graphite and it will skip over those white areas. See how this complex dark shadow under the chin and around the sleeve can be put down as one big piece. Just work that way until you have all of the shadows in place. Don't go too dark with anything because you still want to be able to make changes to the form if you need to. I'm going to cover that blouse with a solid gray. And work until the entire thing is covered. 
The next step here is to do some blending. When you're shading, use the largest blending tool that you can for the area, and that will help ensure a smoother finish, and follow the contour of the form. After you've blended, the tip will be dirty with some graphite, and you can use that as a shading tool in its own right. So that's the first pass of shading. Now I need to upgrade to a softer pencil and add the darkest darks. So some of those are going to be in the eyes, in the eyelashes, so keep your pencil sharp and try to put those lines in with one movement. The nostril is dark, the open area between the lips is dark, and then of course this shadow under the chin that defines the outline of the face. I'm going to take a little time and darken up these darkest places and then I'll come back to it when it's time to do another blending pass. After you've darkened up a few of these darker places and add a little bit more detail, it's time for that second pass of shading. A lot of the shading is going to be more subtle and in large areas where you want to hide your strokes, use little circle strokes instead of going back and forth. See how I use the dirty stomp to add some of those subtle, very light shadows in the face. And remember that the eye will fill in shadows for you. So always err on the side of putting in less detail than what you think is necessary. To shade the hair, you can begin in the shadows and just pull your stomp or tortillon through the darks. Follow the growth of the hair and you'll get a lot of the necessary shaded texture just by doing that. I'm going to go up to a 4B and start to lay down some really dark shadow tone. As the hair curls over the shoulder it gets a little dark. Then to make this chin push back I need to darken up the shadow here. So you see how the process works. I'm just picking out a few places here and there, really darkening them up. For the white part of the dress where you need to add shadows, change it up. Go to an H or a 2H or even harder and then just really use a gentle touch and put in that subtle detail. Okay, now when you've got enough done, go back and re-blend the tone that you just put down. And this is the same exact shading process and blending process that you used for the first pass. So I'm going to finish it up off camera, come back to you when the piece is farther along. After adding some more extreme darks under the figure here and there in the shadows, your portrait starts to take on a more finished professional look. One little thing I like to do is to break up the outline when you have a white object on a white background by just lightening that line and breaking into it here and there. Also you want to pick out a line of reflected light around the outside of the darker objects which will give more depth and a sense of three-dimensionality. I'm also going to blot out a few highlights here and there. And on the edge of the cheek I'm going to do a line of light and just work in this fashion, making some tiny little adjustments, pulling out some small highlights, adding some lines for realism here and there until the picture is what you consider complete. So that concludes this class on portrait drawing. Now let's move forward and do the same drawing but in a painting.